Let me ask you another question. Yeah. Um, as far as, let's go back to the start of bodybuilding when you were, you know, trying to be a great bodybuilder, you were in love with it. And I'm not trying to take this back yeah. to bodybuilding. I want to spin this off some, uh, on a different direction. But has it always, is, was there a certain time when it clicked or has it always been like, we're making money way before or way more important than being a successful bodybuilder even though this was the the industry that you were in has it always been like pay the bills get debt free be live this lifestyle instead of be a great bodybuilder chase being a pro card i took five years off of bodybuilding the box i just i I don't i can't say i really like the industry the fitness industry the bodybuilding world i can't say it's I mean, I like bodybuilders, but sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't really fit a lot of my moral fabric, Right. you know, um, bodybuilding and fitness tends to be, you know, a lot of oriented with nightlife and parties. And if you ever went to the Arnold, the after parties, right. I never quite fit in with that, you know, so, and, and there's, there's like people who do really dumb things. Like you have a big YouTube channel called the trend twins. Like right. at the end of it, when I go to my kid's school, I don't want to be affiliated with the word trend. Right. As much as I love trend and we all love trend, I don't need that to be my persona. So unfortunately our our world is tainted with drug use yeah. and a lifestyle that I might not, you know, be be a part of, that it might not be my thing. So for me it's becoming a great becoming a bodybuilder. I love training. I love competition and it just becomes who you are. Right. Like you wake up and you work out, you know, and competing for me is just a way to kind of show what you've done. Right. And it's a way for me at this point in my life, it's like, I want to see how I do versus younger guys. You know, I, I, I want to, I don't even care about proving it to others because there's always going to be those guys that like, have small arms, you have this, you have that. I, I have a mirror. Right. I'm like, we know we're our own biggest critic. Like right. we don't have to point out our weak points. We right. No. Yeah. We know. And, and there's certain genetic things like you will never you will your, your genetic weaknesses they're always going to be your weaknesses all you can do is bring them up so i always like to kind of impress myself um but becoming a great bodybuilder was never really and i know where i stand like i just i know i'm not genetically there and I'm not willing to make up those genetic deficiencies with, with risky behavior, if that makes sense without saying too much. Was there ever a time where you were? No, I don't think so. I mean, 2013, I pushed the envelope when I got my NABA pro card before NABA fell apart. Yeah. Um, which was an accident. I was just doing a warm-up show for nationals, and I'm like, I'm not giving it because you have to give up your pro card to compete in nationals. Okay. So. And, oh, I got you. Yeah, so I was like, I just got it. I'm not giving this up. Like, right. You know, so I, I did push the envelope a little bit, but it was never like insulin or anything that could kill you immediately. But I, I took the doses right. to a level and I didn't feel too good. Like, right. I, and I don't think I looked better. Like looking back at those pictures, I looked so much better in 21 when I came back than I did in 13. I had more muscle maturity. I was probably, see, I, I competed at 201. It was 201 at the NABA show. Or I weighed in at like 199, and I think I got on stage like 201. Like I got on stage at 211, and that was after taking five years off. I think that at the end of the day, I don't think that taking your dosing super high, like Sean Corita didn't all of a sudden in 2015 decide to take everything. Right. Like you're just seeing years of buildup. Like I'm sure I don't want to speak for him. And right. I don't know. Right. But it, and I'm not I'm not saying that he's not natural. But assuming that he's not natural, I'm sure that in 2015, he didn't just be like, okay, now's the year I'm going to take it to this level. Right. You're just looking at... Three genetics. pounds, five pounds every year. Over you 20 years. You realize that three pounds a year over five years is fit. Have you ever seen 15 pounds of muscle? Can you no. imagine Brandon Curry with 15 more pounds of muscle? He would be, still be winning the Olympia. It, it would be stupid. but Just in the right places. Brandon's 39, 40 years old this year. Yeah. Once you hit a certain age, you, you're gonna you're gonna look good. Like Dexter competed till he was fifty. Yeah. But Dexter's looked the same since he was forty. So your goal when you get past forty, you might make some incremental gains. I made some gains, but you're not gonna see somebody over forty just all of a sudden pack on twenty pounds of lean mass. Right. And just destroy everybody. Unless you're Tony Freeman, he actually did. 
Tony Freeman didn't start competing to his late 30s. That's crazy. Tony, remember Tony? Yeah, no, Tony. No. X, X Man. This looks so good, man. Him and Quincy Taylor were two tall guys. Yeah. Two favorite tall guys. Quincy Taylor. We sponsored him back in the nation. Who? Which bodybuilder? Don't say Arnold because I know Arnold didn't. Didn't. I, he he transitioned the sport for everyone. But who's your favorite bodybuilder? Like which one? Made your penis hard. Well. Watching their video. Dor- Dorian, I got started. Yeah. My favorite physique of all time has to be a good friend of mine, Philly. Okay, I think for sure. When you feel, Phil, you make my penis hard. Um, <laughs> Phil, Phil, in my opinion, that's some good clickbait. Phil, Phil was is still. If he put if he pulled it together, would he be Phil of his prime? Again, he's in his forties. I don't think he's gonna. People are like if you came back, you'd win. I don't know. Like the guys who are winning look really good. Hottie looks really good. Yeah. And and the problem with the old guys like the Dorians and stuff, like Dorian. And I say this as someone who's a huge fanboy, right. who spent tons of time with Dorian. I consider him a friend. Dorian never had glutes. He had grainy hamstrings. Dorian never had shredded glutes. Find me a picture with shredded glutes. You see grains. Right. He never had striations. Right. Never had striations. For Dorian to say that we're not in as good a shape now, not one guy in the top seven didn't have shredded glutes. Right. So for them to say, oh, they just know no conditioning, mate. Dorian, what are you looking at? You might have had a better hamstring. Right. Like, even then, like, look at Huddy's hamstrings are dug from granite. Yeah. And him to say, Brandon Curry didn't deserve it in 2019, that's blasphemy. Brandon Curry, and I got shit for this. I said, Brandon would be Dorian. No, no, he wouldn't have. I'm like, Brandon had shredded glutes. Brandon was only about five or 10 pounds off from where Dorian was. And he had a better shape. I would take Brandon in 2019 versus Dorian's prime. I would. I think that I think that there's two different personalities there. Yes. So the I guess you would say the hard gainer guy is probably always going to le- lean towards Dorian. Yeah. And then um, I just think I mean Brandon's physique is just so aesthetically pleasing Perfect. that yeah I mean um, and I still think he has the power to win if if everything was where it needed to be. I I, I just don't think that. I, I don't think that he can dedicate because he goes to Kuwait for right. 16, I, 12 to 16 weeks. And then you see someone like, and this is what I said this, and I say this as someone who would literally, you know, he's my old business partner and, and he's somebody I'd literally give a kidney to. But I just don't think that Brandon has the drive and the time. You got guys like Nick Walker who 365 days a year every day are not missing meals. And Nick is honestly not physique wise. Because, again, your physique you love is usually the one you tend to be more like. Right. Like, Nick is the op- – me, <clears throat> you know, I'm conditioning in shape because that's all I got. I can't be sized. Right. Where Nick is just, holy shit, that guy's hard, Freak factor. shredded, freaky. Nick's my favorite bodybuilder right now. Yeah. Because he's, he's, got, that, he's got that Branch Warren, like, work ethic. Yeah. And, and Nick is the guy who would literally chew on a concrete brick to gain size. Whatever you tell him. And I'm like, God, I love him. Like, at first, I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Like, this is disgusting. What? Yeah. Look at the veins. And I'm like, then I started following him. We had a couple conversations offline. And I was like, I fucking love this kid. Yeah. Like, I am the biggest Nick Walker fan now. Like, I love him. I, he's one of the few I seek out where I will actually put in my search bar Nick Walker. Yeah. And look his shit up because it doesn't always come in my feed algorithmically. Right. Algorithm wise, somehow I always get like food. Like, I don't know why I don't go to my feed much, but it's always like big hamburgers. <laughs> what the fuck? It must know I'm dieting, right? Right. And, um, but man, Nick Walker, he's going to win an Olympia. I believe it. And, He's just because he is just the embody. He's the, he's got that Branch Warren, that kind of blue collar flair. If he doesn't win an Olympia, he'll win an Arnold. He'll get a he's most already, muscular. He's already won an Arnold. Yeah, he won a few. Of them. Yeah, I think that he's just the guy. He's my favorite, and he's young. He's hard not to like. Yeah, he's a good guy. I mean, he just kind of does his thing. Yeah, he doesn't get caught up in the drama. Even when he does get caught up in the drama, it's whatever. Yeah, I really like him. I think he's not my favorite physique. But physique is so subjective. Yeah. Um, but looking at, I thought the, I thought the top two of the Olympia, top three, top four, I thought it was dead on. I think the judges got it right. Yeah. I think Hadi deserved it. He's not my favorite physique either, but because I, I would pick Derek if I'm going with favorite physique. 
Man, Derek, Derek's something special, man. And I've been saying this. I, I've got. To, I'm not gonna say we're like tight boys, but I could text Derek right now, and he would text me back. Yeah. Um, I've been when he his previous coach before Hani, they were on the fence of of moving up. And and the thing is, Derek's you know Derek's one of the shorter guys, but he's been battling getting back down to 212 for years. And I'm like, dude, let it. But and that's the thing, like his body wants yeah. to grow. I was like, just let him go. Let him go. Like, don't push it. Just let him go. And it's unhealthy. Well, but, second but, back but, down? But you, know, but you know what he did in college, right? Uh, wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. For him, that's nothing. Right. Wrestlers are nuts. My kids are wrestlers. I had a guy, a kid last weekend, dropped 20 pounds. I wrestled all in school. Dude was in my sauna for like friggin' two days. I was like, all right. They're, they're crazy. It's a totally different mentality. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you could tell his ears are messed up too. You could tell he was good at it. Here. You could tell because when you have bad ears, you know that that guy put in that work on the mat. Like Derek's a freak, but the top two are right. I don't think Derek should have won. I think Hottie had him on conditioning, and you know, again, like that's the thing is that once you lose the Olympia, you, it's hard to pull a Cutler and come back. Yeah, you know, and that's that's where Brandon's just like the new class. You got these two former two twelve guys who have two twelve waists. Yeah, but their bodies are just. Derek's kept his waist down. He's just got cartoonish. My question about Brandon, and you'll, you'll probably be able to answer this because I feel like y'all have a close enough relationship. Why doesn't Brandon just go the Dexter route? Just stay the same? Just win shows. I mean, you don't have to win the Olympia, but top five at the Olympia and go win every other show. Like, like if we're talking the business play here, and I don't know, I don't know all the things that he's got going on business-wise – outside of just the gym and, and, you know, whatever. But why not just go rack up money? I don't think he cares about money. What? They are, they live very simple. They live in a simple house. Yeah. They live simple lives. I think he still drives a car that's air conditioning has been broken. He bought his, wins the Olympia and buys his wife a car. Yeah. And just drives his, uh, his old, he just, they don't care. Like they're not financially driven. If you're like, Brad, this is an easy way to make a million dollars. He'd be like, all right. Yeah, I mean, you you definitely know when you talk to him, his stress levels seem very low. Yeah. And I mean, that, I could that he, that could totally be a facade, but like when you talk to Brandon, he's like, that's how he is. He yeah. nothing stresses Brandon. Yeah. Nothing, and that's why he he's never really off. Yeah. He could be he's never off because of stress. He's off because he didn't give enough time to die. Right. When he gives a full sixteen to twenty weeks in Kuwait, he impresses everybody. It's when he's Kind of like, yeah, we'll do it in 10. Right. And then he's still on the arc. He did it in 10 weeks. Right. Somehow doing a Lavroni, gaining weight, getting harder, which genetics, right? Yeah. But, I, I mean, he's just not motivated by financial means. So, Dexter likes money. Yeah. You know? Um, whereas, the um, Brandon's not driven by that. Right. So, Brandon's driven by winning. So, he still goes into the Olympia to win. Right. And... Brandy, extremely competitive, driven to win. So you have those two. And Brandon's more of a, a quiet, driven to win kind of guy. He doesn't yeah. get mad when he loses. Yeah. But, I mean, he trains to win. And I just don't think that – I don't think that it gets him out of bed to win the New York Pro. Right. Or to win Makes a sense. smaller show. I think what gets him out of bed is competing in the big shows. Yeah. And – but, yeah, from a business standpoint, I also think that you look at longevity. I think Dexter was able to do it. Um, with all these guys competing and qualifying, if Brandon's just kind of doing shows like Dexter, is he able to bring enough to beat those guys now? To beat the Nick Waters? Is that a risk for his reputation? There's a lot of things. That Makes sense. Like. And I don't know, I've never talked to him about that, but like, there's a risk doing those shows in that you lose. Yeah. And then you get knocked even further down. Right. So it, it's, it's not... Remember, like, you got to do shows to be seen? Yes. Which I didn't understand before because I'm like, it should be who looks best on that day. Right. But then you realize that Nationals, the average competitor, is only on stage for 15 seconds. Right. So they need to know to look for you. Right. It's like, hey, remember that dude from last year? Oh, that guy. Yeah. Like, and that's, you know, like, I was able to, you know, even in big classes, I think I was good enough. But North Americans, I can make an argument that... I could have won maybe as a light heavy. I, I didn't deserve to win, but I could have made the argument. But these other guys did it the year before, and the judges knew them from the year before, and 
you know, here's me, they might have seen me on Instagram. It's like, it, it's different. So when you're judging shows, it's hard. Everybody looks the fucking same. Like, and they're just judging the first round. You don't realize it's like, you don't go, you prepare this posing routine, there's only like a 10% chance you're gonna do it. Right. You're coming out, you do your mandatories, then they pick their top 10. Yeah. Then you come out, you do your mandatories, and man, when I say man, you do your relaxed for your first round. Right. And then you do your mandatories, and then they pick your top six, that's it. Yeah. And they're the ones who get to pose. Everybody else gets to go the fuck home. Yeah. So, imagine being a judge, and trying to choose the best physiques out of 50 guys based on standing relaxed. Well, and the thing is, you've been doing that all, all weekend too. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're gonna judge this class, and then it's not over at that point. You gotta judge till 6 p.m. tonight. So I, I, I understand where you- You had a, was it you? I think it was you, the post about if you're going to another state to do shows. Yeah. Everybody thinks their state has it against them. I don't Every care. state believes that. North Carolina was like that. And I knew Valentino when he was running out there. Valentino didn't play that shit. They don't care, man. No, they don't care. They don't care about you. The judges don't know any of you. They don't even go on social media. No. <laughs> you the, think, you the, think the, Kelly the, Webb is sitting there? Right. Like, I'm going to screw this guy over. <laughs> when, when Kelly Webb sees my Facebook, like most of the stuff that Kelly ever comments is like stuff about my kid. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Same. He's like, ah, man, she's growing up. She, yeah. She's going to be just like you and stuff. I post stuff about bodybuilding. They don't care. No. You know they, what I mean? They, they literally choose who they think is the best for that day. Right. Like people got mad. They're like, I, I, I came back. I literally trained. I was going to do the knocks when I came back. I literally was only bodybuilding for four days. I was in a boxing camp. I was doing a, I was only training one day a week. Right. And I'm like, my wife said, you got to stop boxing. I'm like, why? Because you keep getting beat. Like, I came home fucked up from sparring. She's like, you're done. Right. I'm like, I bodybuild? And so I was like, just do the state shows. And I'm like, it's Tuesday. Like, fuck it, let's go. And yeah. I remember I told you about it, and I came in second in my class. You were like, you won it. I'm like, no, I didn't. I got a second. I'm like, I'm like, okay, we can nitpick things, but at the end of the day, I wasn't lean enough. You know, I, I, I didn't suffer enough. This guy's been probably prepping for 20 weeks. Yeah. I prepped for four days. And then you went on the next... I won Knox, yeah. the next one. Um, I had to suck down the light heavy because, yeah, my body put muscle back on. But, dude, I was literally not training for like a year getting ready for this boxing tournament. Like yeah. I wasn't bodybuilding. Right. So I lost muscle, I was shredded, but I had no pop. I look at the pictures, it was like, but another two weeks in the Knox Classic, my glycogen came back. I was literally eating all the junk food from Aldi. Yeah. I was eating cookies and I was trying to fill in. Yeah. Cause I was in boxing shape. But in the meantime, like, as I got a question. In the meantime, like you're eating that food, you're not gonna look your best. Right. So there's a question for you, man. Clean food. So like chicken, rice. You look at, do you notice a difference in physique quality based on what kind of food you eat? Like if you're eating clean, bodybuilding clean, mm -hmm. versus if you're just fitting your macros, do you feel there's a difference? Well, I've never fit macros. So yes, there's a difference in, in look. Is that what you're going for? Mm -hmm. In look, I believe there's a big difference. In performance, I think there's a big difference. Yes. I'm a performance type of person. Yes. So like, and I asked you earlier about, um, I don't remember what we were talking about, but you were like, I just love to train. And so for me, I've always looked at it as like, well, if six ounces gets me this and 200 grams of rice gets me this, what if I do 300 grams of rice and seven ounces of protein? And so, I've always seen it as, I, you know, I got way past the, the garbage food. Don't get me wrong. I still like some stuff. But I, I've always been like, when I turned bodybuilding on, it was like, we're not. I've always said, if this is pizza and this is, or if this is your goal, this is pizza and this is chicken, 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 chicken. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. but now... That's just the way I saw it at the time. Don't get me wrong. I, I've been beat by people that they'll eat three pizza meals and I eat six chicken meals <laughs> and they'll beat me every time. Yeah. You know, but I'm I'm most focused on my performance in the gym because yeah. I love to train. So if I eat something and that backs me up or that bloats me, I don't train as hard. I don't get to train as hard. And so I'm just kind of – and plus, man, I've eaten like I've eaten for – almost 20 years now and so I not 20 years 15 but 
I know what it's going to taste like. Mm-hmm. I know, you know, versus if I stop and try to get a burger at some just quick place, I don't know what that burger's going to taste like. I might hate it. And I've, I've, I've lost this appreciation for food. So there's certain things I still love, and I'll always love them because I ate them as a kid or certain things like that. But I'd rather eat the same thing that's going to taste the same way every time versus trying this and not liking it. Yeah. And that's just how I am. Like, I'm a creature of habit. I, I like, I like, it's not that I like that food. I just don't like having to guess, like, is this going to be good? Is this, you know, is it is the service going to be bad? Well, I'll just take my chicken and rice or whatever it might be, and I'll just eat that. Yeah, I, I notice a huge difference in look when I totally, and I, I eat clean. Yeah. But my look changes. I mean, if, yeah, if you eat, if you eat your chicken and rice as, as your carb up, but, on, on the flip side, you do six pieces of pizza. You're going to look totally different. Mm-hmm. And you probably like the look of the pizza better. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel I feel better. I look drier. Everything just pops more when I'm in that zone. Yeah. And I'm not messing up. I'm not having free meals here and there. That's what I know, even if my weight's the same. Like, I looked at my update pictures. I think I posted a couple of them on Instagram. And all I did was just change about 5%. Like, yeah. and my macros are still the same. Yeah. Like nothing's changed except for that. I'm like, okay, now I remember why I do this. Yeah. So a lot of times it just takes out the variables. And you the know, variable. That's yeah, it. variables are, are a horrible thing yeah. to have when you're trying to reach a certain look or you're getting ready for stage. And if you look at, if you look at who truly brings it, they're usually pretty simple. Yeah. Like chicken and rice, chicken and potato. You know, it's when people go like, can I fit this cookie into my macros? I'm like, Man, that creates more stress just trying to figure out how to fit those macros yeah. than it does to do it. And again, a lot of people do great doing that. For me, as someone who doesn't have the best genetics, I need every angle I can get. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. Me just too. Just because, you know, some people, maybe, maybe Phil could have got by being a bit looser or whatever, but someone like me, like, I need all the help I can get. Me too. So if I leave any, var- especially since my other, my life variables are so unpredictable. Yeah. So my life can't be regimented. You know, I'm not a full-time bodybuilder. Right. You know, where some of these guys are. Yeah. So when I'm going up against these guys, I need to make sure that I can only control what I control. And that's what I ingest. Yeah. But I can't, I have more stress than other bodybuilders. My sleep's more erratic. Yeah. So I need to control what I control. One thing I control is what I eat. Absolutely. So... Yeah, I just I try to keep it as much as I promote like eh, just fit your macros. Yeah, if you're trying to get to a certain level, I think you need to limit the variables. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, I had a, a list of questions that we kind of touched on a lot of them, but there's one I definitely want to ask you about. Yeah. We're we're running out of time. I know you got to be somewhere too, but um, yeah, we we kind of touched on a lot of them, but. One that I really want to hear you talk about is is being an active dad, and as much as you pour back into kids, like with Carbon, your own kids, I, I see how you promote like your your daughter training, your son's training, and all that. And I know that you you coach a lot of people at Carbon too. Um, I just want to hear your thought process on that. Well, when I was a kid, like. Other than me and my wife, there was there was a coach. His name was Coach Cornell Miles. He was a reverend linebacker coach. And, you know, he took me under his wing. Um, him and a, a kid who was a year older than my sophomore year going into junior year. I was 170 pounds soaking wet. And I said, can I train with you guys? And they laughed at me. They said, okay, if you can hang with us on chest day. Because back then we didn't have athletic training. We had basically bodybuilding in a football weight room. Right. And I almost died, but I did. And so... They took me under their wing and they trained with me. And even though I had a dad, he was always sick, right? Like, so the, the, I had a very strong man showing me the values of hard work and you can reach your goals. I went from being a really horrible JV player to a highly sought after recruited junior. Gained 70 pounds of muscle or overall weight. Right. In, in less than probably six months. And so from there, I knew that my long term would be coaching. Because even if you have a strong male role model in your life, if you look at what's happening, these riots in Chicago and all these crazy things and all the crime, usually these kids don't have dads 
In fact, I venture to guess that all those kids on those videos had no father at home. Yeah. So we need more strong male role models. They have great female coaches, but I'm a male. Right. So I'm going to dedicate this. My daughter also coaches. So yeah, she could be a strong role model as well. But at the end of the day, these kids, whether they're from Brentwood or Inglewood, they need role models. So by showing kids sports, sports are the one thing. Bodybuilding, okay, it's subjective. Sports, football, baseball, basketball, it's usually you get out what you put in. Yeah. Even if you're an average athlete, if you put in the work, you'll become good. If you put in more work, you'll become great. You might not be elite, but you'll move up. Right. And you'll get better. And sports will show you that the harder you work, the more results you get. Same with bodybuilding, same with the gym. So by us going in there and coaching kids, which I believe is what I'm on this earth to do, that's my honest thing. God made me good at business to give me the means to be able to dedicate my life to coaching long term. The more we can give back to the community, to the kids, the better our future is. And my future is not going to be in running for mayor, city councilor, state senator. I'm not cut out to be a politician. But what we can do on a local level, like we talked about earlier, you can only control what you can control. Whether it's coaching Little League, whether it's being on the school board, whether it's being in the PTO, influence your own community. Make your own community right. If we all focus local, focus on your own community, focus on the children. I'm not one of those it takes a village kind of guys. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a socialist. Right. But again, what can we do outside our sphere? And my kids, they're my kids. I love them. I'm here to literally make them the next generation. That's our job as parents, to create this next generation. Right. Carry on your legacy. Yep. Whereas they're also a part of a lot of other groups. Like they have coaches who are also role models. Like my son loves his wrestling coach. Yep. Goes to a place called Young Guns, Hatchet. They love him. The more positive adult influences they have in their life, the better. So I just want to be a piece of that puzzle. And with my kids, you know, I mean, they're, they're it. Like, what else is there? What are we working for? We get out of bed every day. You have kids. Once you have kids, it's no longer about you. Right. So I always tell people, if you're it's like, oh, my marriage isn't working. Do you have kids? No. It's not, not going to work. Right. <laughs> right? Like, if you have kids, you, you try to figure it out. Yeah. You do everything you can to figure it out. Obviously, it's toxic. You hate each other. There's a reason divorce can be a good thing. But when my wife and I went through some bad issues in 2015, we went to counseling and we figured it out because there's nothing. I'm a big fan of the nuclear family. I'm a big fan of a dual parent household. I'm not saying vilifying by any means single parent households or divided households. I'm just saying if you look at optimal. Yeah. Versus it can work. Yeah. I'm going to go with optimal every time. Right. Statistically, what I'm saying is irrefutable. It's irrefutable. That statistically, dual parent households do better. So <clears throat> my goal, and I look at my kids, but every kid I coach is an extension of my family. Yeah. So what can we do locally? That's what you need to ask yourself. So for me, coaching is, is everything. And my kids, you know, you just try to teach them values and to make the right decisions. Because my daughter is 17. And I need to know that when she goes to college, she's going to make the right decision. Right. You know, say my kid's 50. You got to get it right. So for me, coaching is just everything. Um, I like that you brought up about, I, think, I can't remember what you said the guy's name was, but basically he was a, he was a. Coach Miles. Coach Miles. So he was a huge, you know, he was a, he was, he took, he took you under his wing. It was a, you still remember his name and Absolutely. probably what the, you could probably recite that first chess workout. Like it was yesterday. A lot of incline press. <laughs> yeah, and, and then I became friends with Leon, who's an upperclassman. And, and again, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a great story because, you know, I was, again, they, they were both black guys. Yeah. Like my, my, and, and it taught me the world. It taught me that we're all really the same. Yeah. And I knew that going in, but this reaffirmed it. Like there's, there's like, you want to you equalize everything. You want the world to be a great place. The world should be like the gym. There's no racism. I've never seen racism in the gym. There's right. none of that shit in the gym. In the gym, you're all working towards a common goal. Yeah. You're and as a society, we should do the same thing. You're pushing him. He's pushing you. It doesn't matter what his mama said about you or whatever. Like, you're making him better. He's made, And I shouldn't have even said that. But but it's like you said. There's no racism. There's no... No. And, and, what, and the thing is, when you, when you both give everything you have, you walk out of the gym and you're just like... Yep. You're my dog. Yeah, you, you know, C.T. Fletcher, who I, we own Iron Addicts together. Yeah. 
he's famous for saying we're all the same under the bar. That's right. And Iron Addicts Gym is in a you know a, a very diverse community and around like Signal Hill, which is Long Beach, California. Yeah. You'll never see a place where you feel more welcomed. Yeah. And it's a hardcore gym, right? Planet Fitness is no judgment zone. Exactly. Judge. And there's no, there's no hardcore about it. But you go to one time. <clears throat> no, I ramble, but we're at Metro Flex Long Beach, and there was an obese woman. And this was back when I think. Mike Rashid, Big Rob, I think Rich Piano was there at the time. I don't know if he was there that day. I can't remember. And there was an obese woman doing sled pushes. And her trainer was pushing her. I'll never forget this. Everybody's doing their own thing, training. People have their camera crews. So Metroflex Long Beach was the thing in Cali, right? And all of a sudden, the gym stopped what they were doing, put their weights down. Everybody went around this girl pushing the sled and cheered her on until she finished. Yeah. That's what the gym is to me. Yeah. And it always will be from when I was a high school football player to now. The gym is a place where we come together and for that brief hour, maybe hour and a half of the day, all that exists is you and your goals and a bunch of other people trying to reach those goals too. Absolutely. I think that's a good ending note right there. That was good. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't have said that any better. It's the truth. If you've ever belonged to a gym like a Carbon's getting there. I still yeah. think we need more personalities in yeah. there that do that. Like Metroflex back in the day, like an Iron Addicts. You know, there's a sense of community that it's like it's like the old TV show Cheers. You walk in there, everybody knows your name, and it's you have your regulars, you yeah. have your personalities, and you'll find that the biggest, meanest looking dudes, they're your biggest fans. Oh yeah. He's gonna. He wants. He wants you to. You know, hit that next PR. He wants to come over there and spot you. He wants to. And that's the thing. Like, I have kids. You know, I I go in there and put on because I'm having a good time. You know, that's my yeah. best part of the day. So like, if I'm loud or we're cutting up, honestly, if I'm loud and I'm cutting up, that's because I'm trying to wake my work my workout partner up. Yeah. Like I can go in the gym and do all my stuff and not make a noise. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if I'm if I'm this or we're cutting up, I'm like. Yeah, and that's that's really to to get him fired up, and then when when he gets fired up, I'm more fired up, and then I hope that kid gets fired up because he sees us. You know what I mean? We walk in the gym all the time, and people are like, "Man, you guys are huge," and I'm like, "I was that kid one time." Yeah. You know, and and I just told myself like, "Man, I got to do whatever he's doing," and and I don't know that that's what kids are saying nowadays, but I um, I just try to. It, it can be obnoxious, you know. I mean, our I think our personalities is a lot alike, but. It's it's all there's all a reason for it, you know what I mean? And it's and it's all like it's a good intention. The intention's there. Uh, my intention is not to make you feel lesser than because I'm lifting heavier or I'm being louder than you. Like I want to bring you up with me. Yeah, and the difference between this generation now they pose a lot more than we did. Oh you? my gosh, they are posing after every set. Like we never did. We didn't want to be seen because my first gym was Gold's Venice. Yeah. If I would have done that, I would have got hit in the head with a barbell. Well, I mean, there were some big guys in there. And that's what's crazy is, like, the smallest guys are posing. Dude. I'm like, <laughs> you, and that's what people ask me all the time about, about coaching. And I'm like, well, man, see, the thing is, I have this different appreciation for for the new generation. is because they'll, they're, they're in the gym for six months, and then they want to do a show. I was in the gym for six years before I was like... 27 for me. Yeah, dude. And like, they were like, man, you've got it. Like, you're doing everything right. You've got you've got the physique. Like, I'm like, I don't know about wearing that. You know, the trunks. I was like, ah. And this is when like, this is right around when like Flex was like the biggest thing going. Yeah. Gaspari and stuff like that. And I was like, I like everything about Flex, but I don't know about my butt cheeks looking like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, God. Yeah, he... Fuck, Flex is cool. I mean that with all sense yeah. of right, I get sounding it. the way. I mean, wow. It's just a block of developed muscle, just good proportions. But, you know, for me, when I started, like in Gold's Venice, it was it was weird back in the day because I trained there. And in Culver City, there was a Valley Total Fitness, which was actually, it became like where everybody from like Inglewood and stuff trains. So it was an all-black gym. And if you've ever trained in an all-black gym, and I mean this, not racist, but holy shit, they train at a level that Caucasians do not train at. And it taught me how to train. It taught me respect, too. Yeah. Because if you don't rack your weights, back, I don't know how it is now. It ain't like that. If you don't rack your weights, 
you, you're getting yelled at by everybody in that gym because you kept that gym right. You showed respect. Yeah. And there was always a spot. So I had the, and I created goals when it was before it was just a bunch of unemployed actors. Yeah. You know, back when it was just goals. Right. So I was taught this gym etiquette and this appreciation for the muscle. And there was a rule, like unwritten. You see kids hop, there's kids, teenagers in that gym. We're on more gear than we do. You know what I mean? Like tons of gear. Yeah. And back in the day, there was a rule. It was unwritten. But unless I think it was you had to bench 315 and squat and deadlift 405 before you could go on. Yeah. It was an unwritten. I think those were the numbers, but that was the rule. I forgot who told me that, but it was like, you just do it. I think there would be a lot less. If if those were still rules of life, I don't think we would have transgender <laughs> school shootings and things like that going on. It was different, man. There was there was unwritten codes, and people kept them. Like, the dude at the gym would be like, hey, you know, because you go, because kids will ask, like, hey, man, what are you taking? And then they're like, don't even think about it until you have these numbers, yeah. and then we'll approve you. It's yeah. like, wait, you're approving my drug use? What is going on here? Yeah. They can jump on, start a YouTube channel. Like, and that's the thing. I wanted to touch on that too. I mean, you've, how long have you been monetizing your social 2011. media? 2011. 2011. And you have kids now. I mean, I'm just jumping on board. I've, I've had a pretty, pretty decent following on Instagram for a while, but I've never even thought like, well, I'm going to try to push it and then try to make money off of it. But you got kids now in the gym. Like I said, I think they're six months in the gym and they're going to start a YouTube channel. Yeah, and give out really bad advice. <laughs> um, it's not that. It's not advice at all. And no. Um, when you spend what we had, so at the small carbon, the other, like, it was months ago, these kids literally came in, set up a tripod, posed in front of it, and left. They didn't even lift. And my, my daughter, I'm training my daughter, who trains like us. My daughter actually probably trains harder than us. Right. And I'm like, she's like, the fuck was that? And I'm like, if you ever do that, you're not my daughter anymore. Yeah, like, she done. just goes in and trains. Yeah. Like, so that was, but yeah, you see, I mean, a lot of people, we trained, nobody knew we trained. Like nobody knew unless we made gains because there wasn't Instagram. Yeah. Like we didn't film our workouts. We didn't take pictures. I don't have any pictures or video yeah. from when I was a teenager. That's when I was doing the real impressive stuff. Absolutely. And back in the day we trained because it was who we were. Yeah. It's because we loved it. Now people train because they want to get a following because they want clout. There's a difference in there's a difference in results and mindset if you're training because you love it versus training because you want to get followers yeah. and views and like I've been training with Seamus and just the other like we we haven't even he's a WWE guy for those who don't watch it and so we've been training every day and like people are like I'm like yeah so when are you training with us I've trained like five times and uh, somebody wrote back when's the video coming. Oh shit! I'm like my, I'm like oh. So he's like he's like yeah. Someone he's like do you want to film some of this stuff? We didn't even think about it because he's 45. Right. I'm 42. Like we didn't we don't know. We're like we're just working out. Yeah. And so we did a couple stories yesterday. But yeah. that's we're not training together for internet cloud. We're just pushing each other. And it, it was really weird because the first thing people ask is like, oh, are you guys doing videos together? I'm like, we haven't talked. Maybe I I, I don't know like. I don't have like a camera crew. Like we're just working out in his garage. Yeah. Um, so that's the difference is that my first thought, like if we were to train together, my first thought would be cool. Let's get a killer workout. And then, and then it'd be like, we get there. We're like, we should probably film this. Yeah. <laughs> it's what it got views. But, Absolutely. But I don't even think that I'm like, this is going to be great. Here's like, dude, your trainer Seamus, man. He's got like 3.3 million. I'm like, he does. I'm like, holy sh he does. Okay. Don't care. Right. I just want to work out. Like I'm not after it for the clout, you know. Or else I'd have. I can afford to have a camera back with me. Yeah. Like I don't care. I just want to. I just love training. Absolutely. Like we crushed it the other leg day. I'm like, this would have probably done well on social, but it doesn't matter. I made gains. Yeah. I took pictures. And I'm, I'm coming in. So it's just a different mindset that we have than the younger generation has. And I hope that social media doesn't prevent them from actually falling in love with the game. Right. So we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, I'm super glad that you came. I yes. know. Sorry about yesterday. It's all right. Um, See, it was like, I have a board meeting at twelve, and it ran over, and it went early. Sorry about that. No, you're good. I know. See, we'll see. Um, as far as carbon goes, my workout partner lives right next to carbon, and I can't. 
I mean, I can come to Carbon every day, but it's then it's got to be at a certain time and blah blah blah. So I'm, I go to Carbon. Um, I don't know, one one day a week, um, but it's making that drive every single day is it's tough. It, 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 I'm usually yeah, it's just in, it's just been a my life's kind of a shit show. Mine is too. It's just a, it, but I like shit shows. Well, like, I mean that's what keeps us. Uh, the thing is, your brain and my brain never stops, so it, it's a part of that. And that's why you can't ever, you can never retire. Do you know that your uh, life expectancy goes down ten years if you retire at fifty five versus sixty five? I didn't know that. It sounds. Right though. It sucks. I'll I tell people. Retire. I tell people all the time. When you quit, you're gonna die. Why would you live if you have nothing to live for? Exactly. Just I'll to sit at the. A, I'll be a greeter at Walmart. Sit on the couch. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What would I would do honestly if I was retired? If I was forced to retire, let's say I had to not compete. Here's what I would do. I'd get a lifetime membership and I'd stay there all day. I'd be in the sauna. I'd be in the pool. I'd work out. I'd be at the cafe. That'd be my life. I'd be a lifetime guy. Lifetime gym. <laughs> Man, that place is crazy. I can't, I don't understand. What is, um, as far as, we're talking about the gym real quick. Yeah. What more does Carbon have to do before they're wrapped up? Oh, man, the front I know, lobby. Uh-huh. But that's um, that's almost done now, right? The front lobby, um, they got, I think they had to redo Revive. They got to get all the, I think they're doing that as we speak because it has to be medical. Mm-hmm. So relive because there's a Revive name issue, out yeah. there, I believe. So it's and not revived. Bar, it's so it's revived as they're online, uh-huh. but locally it's called Relive. Okay. I think it's it, Relive or Relive. Re- okay. Not sure how, because there was a trademark issue in the state of Tennessee okay. based on their DBA, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so smoothie bar, um, barbershop. There's a lot going in. It should be done by July eighth. And then the and then back out back. Out back they're doing the turf, and they're also going to have a Lumbee on the soccer field. At well, least a half. Where's that going to be? In the corner where the parking is, where no one parks because yeah. it's eight miles away. Yeah. My only fear is that if they do, there are, I think, 2,500 members now. Yeah. If it gets up to 5,000, not only will it be packed, but where are you going to park if they take that field? So then it becomes a parking issue. So I don't know. I think they need to do some math on how many parking spots they'll need. Yeah. Because think about it. You're, you're missing about 20% of the building capacity right now. Yeah. So, and if you have group classes, there's 20 women in there. Yeah. And then if you have legacy, there's up to 30 kids in there. That's 50, up to 50 cars. Yeah. So there's some logistics. I think they've said they're putting it in there, but I almost want to sit down and be like, let's, let's explore parking. Cause right now even you're parking. Yeah. And so what happens if at six o'clock, yeah. everybody's there. Yeah. The soccer field will be dope, but there's going to be turf out in the back. So I'd say the grand opening is officially July 8th. Or ninth, one and, of those two days. And I was in there the other day, and I was talking to Brent. He said that they're talking about putting one in Hendersonville. Yeah, they um they have some uh, expansion plans. I don't think I'm allowed to say what they are, but yeah. Well, it, uh, I'm. I, I said, is it going to be the same size? He's like, yep. It's like, wow, that's big. I mean, what are they at 50, 70 thousand square feet? <sighs> is it forty? I'm not sure. It's hard. It's hard to tell. I because I know we have I think sixty in Ohio for mine. It's slightly smaller. Somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Uh, well, I just I was basing that off of what Redcon is now, which is kind of the same layout footprint. Well, I mean, it's they're both former ACs. That's right? what I'm one saying. Was FAC and one was NAC. I think Redcon's close to 70, 50, 70 square thousand yeah. square feet. Yeah, I think um, man, it's, it's a tough um, it, it's tough to figure out what's going on. But I mean, it's the gym business is you know I own a few of them and it's difficult. There's a man going around taking names and he decides who to free and who to blame.